Well, welcome to the Business Spotlight series. My name is Tanner O'Brien. I'm a senior partner here at Action Coach in Central Texas. Today, I'm sitting down with Eric Winant, who is the founder of Plot Path Finance. Excited to be jumping in, having some conversation about business, probably a little bit about finance and you know all the fun stuff that comes with entrepreneurship and, and getting into to building a business here. So Eric, I just want to say first off, thank you so much for being here. I, I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, why don't we just start with a little bit of background? You know, Give us the uh, we'll call it the 10,000 foot view of kind of what your background is, like what led you on this path. And then of course, tell us a little bit about what does Plot Path Finance do? Okay, great. Well, thanks Tanner for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, love to have these kind of conversations uh, about about the business and, and hopefully it's helpful to, to anybody out there in the, in, the, in the wide world of business. So um, yeah, so the 10,000 foot view is I founded Plot Path in um 2015 uh right at the end of 2015 and so it's been uh been working on this for a little over eight years at this point and that was after a career in finance and accounting and kind of expand the boundaries of that to, to bookkeeping and business intelligence um so the the, the genesis actually was that I was um, leaving the country and I was interested in finding something that I could do uh, remotely, serving businesses and clients in the U.S. from abroad. And so that mm. was really the the uh, the extra little push there. Um, and my, my vision was to create a company that provided outsourced finance and accounting to small businesses. Um, essentially, what I had been doing in my career for businesses of all sizes, from solopreneurs to Fortune 500s, um, and then just before founding Plot Path, I had been the finance director of a $2 million business that was venture capital funded. And I in-housed a lot of the finance and accounting, bookkeeping and business intelligence, and was kind of responsible for everything from the basic bookkeeping up to the quarterly board reporting to the investors. And the, the, the light bulb kind of went off there and said, you know, every $2 million business needs this. None of them get there. Very few of them figure it out and get it right. I said, I should prosify this and create it as a service for all those $2 million businesses. And so that was the, the genesis that, that, uh, that kicked it off, you know, prior to that $2 million firm, I was a finance director. Just before that, I was in business intelligence at Dell in the North American consumer and small business region. So I have P and L, uh, controllership, business intelligence, before that, I had been at Ernst & Young and auditing in Manhattan and uh, fund of funds, hedge fund industry, due diligence and accounting uh, in, in New York as well. And so all of that career kind of led me to, to, to with that background, able to, to build something that could serve uh, businesses um, uh, like this. Very cool. I love, so what got you into the finance path in general was like, is that kind of always the path that you wanted to, to get on? Did you kind of stumble across it um, at, at some point in your life and go, I, I actually just really love the numbers and I want to get into this piece. But what what was your catalyst into the industry overall? Uh, it, it's really uh, something I've been trying to get away from my entire life, but just keep coming <laughs> back to it. <laughs> so uh, really, I mean, one of those uh, nerds in school that just love numbers, you know, like math. And that, that was my thing. So here I am in my, um, oh, what was that? My, my freshman or sophomore year in my accounting 101 class in high school. And I was just leaps and bounds above everybody else. And so the teacher would sit me by myself in my desk and I would study for the uh, state uh, competition. And right. So I went and competed and finished 12th in the state in accounting of all of the accounting high school students out there. And so that was the beginning of this whole career in accounting. Right. And then I went on to University of Texas and was in the professional program in accounting, got a bachelor's in business and a master's in accounting over a five year period. 
and then off to Ernst and Young to do auditing of banks and hedge funds in New York. And so that was the the, the launching path. There, I actually said, I'm going to get out of this accounting thing. And I went back to school. And I did a master's in international affairs at uh, Johns Hopkins uh, School for Advanced International Studies, uh, one year in Bologna, Italy, um, one year uh, in Washington, D.C. I have this obsession for traveling and learning about the rest of the world and cultures. And so that was my attempt to get away from accounting. But then I found myself in Uruguay, actually, where I did an internship during my master's degree. And I found myself consulting with and helping entrepreneurs from a finance, accounting, and operational perspective. And so here I am getting sucked back in. And why? Because I love working with those businesses and those business owners. You know, uh, like I said, anywhere from solopreneur at PlotPath, we typically serve clients mm -hmm. that are um, one to ten million dollars in annual revenue. But anywhere from you know my career and even at PlotPath, we serve smaller than that. Um, I just love you know enlightening those business owners with what what accounting and finance should be you know, helping them make sense out of their business, really understand the financial performance of their business. And so I just keep getting sucked back in. And and, and here I am, I, I got sucked back into it um, after that uh, international affairs degree. And I really relish that, that opportunity to, to serve those business owners and use all of this, you know, experience and background to, to help them run better businesses and ultimately, you know, lead better lives and and, and help the world. Oh man, I, I love that. And I love the journey there. Um, and, you know, I, I'm excited to dive a little bit into a little bit more on kind of what makes your business so special and the things that you do, because um, you said a few things in there. I'm like, huh, so you mean in small business, it's not just about getting the P&L and, and maybe nothing else and hoping or calling that, you know, getting good financials. Um, so I'm excited to kind of dive in there. But before we kind of jump into that path, um, you know, I always like to kind of set the stage, kind of understand kind of where you're at, you know, being eight years into, uh, you know, building this business so for you, so far, uh, what is your role in the business? So you've got the, the title of founder, um, what is, what roles or kind of which hats do you play within your business as you continue to grow plot path? Uh, so we're still a pretty small business, um, that we do have 17 team members. Um, in all, but just a couple of those are, are full-time, uh, W2 employees. So we're a little bit grown up and from that perspective, but, but we're still very small and, and, and flat, not very hierarchical. So I still wear a lot of hats. Um, I'm, I'm the CEO and I'm the head of business development, sales and marketing, right? So that's, uh, a hat that I wear entirely on my own with uh, Andrea here back here, poor thing, having to listen and do the conversation, uh, doing uh, sales operation support and, and marketing support. Um, and then um, I, I have the, so, so those are my primary responsibilities, right? Overseeing the entire business, vision, strategy, sales, marketing, and business development. Of course, I'm still heavily involved in operations and our own finance and accounting, but I have members of the leadership team who are, you know, have primary responsibility for those things. Beautiful. So, you know, as a business of your size and, and knowing the things that you've kind of shared with, uh, you know, what you do in the business so far, um, do you have, uh, you, you know, your CFO or kind of controller or whomever is responsible for finances uh, for you send a, a weekly or a monthly report on the financials and then kind of build a CEO report and send it off to your board, even if that might just be you. Um, do you go that far within your own business? I do actually. Um, it's it's not as fine tuned as I would like it to be, but it's actually something that we're working on, right? It's one of those situations like I try to apply the same finance and accounting principles internally that we do for all of our clients. So for all of our clients, we finalize the month's close. We issue at a minimum two documents, which are standardized, right? The financial KPIs and the financial statements reporting package. One is a beautiful graphical vision of how the business is doing. Um, internally, we're trying to implement the same thing. And it's actually as I've got myself out of the CFO role, right? And handed that off to the accountant who's responsible for that. She's owning that process now. And actually this quarter, she's got six days left to complete her quarterly rock, which is part of the whole EOS system, which I'm sure you've heard of. 
um, it, it, one of those is that to, to improve, finalize, implement that really standardized monthly reporting process. But us, like any business, um, it's, it's going to evolve over time, right? It's always going to change. And so, but, but that's the challenge to, to get it standardized, um, abide by that as much as possible. And then just adapt as the business needs change and therefore the reporting needs change. Mm. I love that so much. Um, and I, I bring it up because I, I want to dive into, you know, why what you do is so important, especially for small businesses. Um, I'll, I'll share with you, I think it was a year and a half, almost two years ago now, um, we had a, uh, we had a coach that really pushed us and forced us to kind of start doing our level of reporting. Uh, we actually have to send weekly reports out uh, from every department that goes up to the CEO. The CEO sends in, you know, a CEO report out to, you know, the rest of the board and, um, actually had to create, you know, weekly forecast on cash, a whole bunch of stuff that we had not been doing before. And I tell you, it was a game changer for our business. Um, cause you could actually see what's happening and be able to make decisions and all that kind of stuff. So, um, when you work with, with businesses, uh, especially for some of the businesses that maybe come in and don't understand kind of the power of, of everything that, that y'all can do, um, how would you articulate the, the importance of it from your context on having, accurate and timely financials to, um, you know, just really understanding that reporting structure and, and things like that for these smaller businesses that probably most of them haven't gotten to that point of, of understanding the power behind it. Yeah. Um, so one thing is that most of the, the potential, uh, biz the businesses that come to us looking for what we do, it's because they're experiencing that pain. Um, and so to a certain extent, there's not a ton of convincing that we have to do for them. Um, we, you know, 90 plus percent of our clients and we have over a hundred, about 110 of them right now come to us via referral, right? Referral from our existing clients, referral from what we call channel partners, which are, you know, your tax CPAs, lawyers, your business coaches, you know, we have a lot of business coaches who are telling their clients, get your finance and accounting and your financial reporting act together. And I'm looking at, they're looking at it. And it's a mess, you know, go talk to Eric at Plot Bath. And so most of them are coming to us with this as a real pain point. And a lot of times they've tried to solve it on numerous occasions over the years of running a business and they can't ever quite get there. You know, it's like what I talked about before to that $2 million business that, that never gets it. They hire the wrong people or they don't have the right, you know, they don't know how to manage those people. And so there's not a lot of convincing there. Once we show, once we understand their needs and show them what we do and how we do it, they're, uh, they're, they're ready. And cause those, cause those people are ready uh, to, to get that financial reporting. Right. But what you said is, is, is really relevant, especially for those smaller businesses that are still doing what I jokingly call bank account business management, right? They're running this business. They're doing a million things, right? Sales and marketing, operations, like HR, everything that has to be done. And they're running as fast as they can do that. And how do they know how the business is doing? Because they look at their bank account and they say, oh, I got a lot of money or don't have a lot of money. Or they're looking at, I, I owe this to my contractors or my payroll. And am I going to be able to make payroll or not? So that's bank account business management. Um, that is a very stressful existence, right? As a, as a business and as a person, right? Like you said, weekly cash flow projections that like changed your business. It's like knowing um, how the business is doing, you know, with timely and accurate financial reporting. And I always like to add the word useful, right? Because you can have timely and accurate reporting, but if, you're, if your tax CPA does it, for example, it's not going to be useful to you, right? It's going to be useful to them to file your 1120 or your 1040 or whatever it is, mm -hmm. your 1065, but it's not going to be useful to you. And so we're very focused on timely, accurate, and useful. You as the business owner making sense out of how your business is performing, you know, get your P&L balance sheet and all the other reporting to, to reflect that. Um, so, you know, you got to, th those smaller business owners that are still doing that bank account business management, they need to recognize that as things get complex, they will thank themselves if they focus on the finance side of things, right? The finance and accounting aspect of managing their business and get to that point where they have that timely, accurate, and useful financial reporting. And it'll be such a, such a relief to not be wondering all the time, can I make payroll, you know, or this question about, you know, what should I do with 
the money I have or don't have. I always talk about, okay, when you're doing bank account business or man management, you are reliant on one number at one point in time in your bank account to desire, decide if you should hire or fire, right? Or invest, spend, or cut expenses. And that's completely inadequate, as, as you know. Um, you got to get to that point where you're managing your business by the numbers, right? So I'm running my business at a minimum by a P&L and a balance sheet. And then ideally, I've got a whole bunch of supplementary reporting that peels the layers of the onion back and tells me, okay, well, that's what the P&L and balance sheet is telling me. It's a, it's a signal that things are going well or not, or certain areas are going well or not. Now I got to peel the, peel the uh, onion back a little bit, right? What's my gross profit by line of business or channel, or what's my margin by uh, client or project, right? Or I need to have a weekly or twice a month cash flow projection to ensure that the cash, my networking capital, right? Which is my cash plus my AR, less my credit cards and AP is adequate to cover my future expected spend, right? Which is my overhead, my operating expenditures. Payroll is a big one for most service businesses, but any other expenses as well. So, I mean, I, I don't know how to convince those people that need to get there. Usually they experience that pain and they suffer. Um, we've had a lot of second time um, entrepreneurs, second time business owners. There's nothing more gratifying to me when they come to us and they say, hey, I'm setting up this business and I want you guys here from day one, right? Because they came to us when it was five years into their other business and stressful and like we got all everything worked out. And they say, I need that from day one. So I know how the business is performing. So if you could, you know, if, if you're a small business owner and you're trying to run and grow this business, if you could take that cue from other business owners who put that importance on finance accounting, get that whole financial operations and reporting figured out. It's ultimately going to help you stabilize the business and, and make better decisions. They're going to help you grow the business in the long run. Mm. You know, it's so fascinating to me that, and, and I would say we've probably seen a lot of the same thing where um, it's almost like you have to experience what it's like to have this change and have these optics and things like that to really kind of grasp the importance of it. Um, yeah. Otherwise, it's, you know, it's like, ah, I think I can manage, I think I can manage, I think I can manage until it's just like too much of a pain. Um, so, you know, hearing that, you know, second time founders, second time business owners, things like that, you know, are, are coming back and saying, let's just get this set up from the beginning because it makes yeah. that much of a difference. Um, totally makes sense uh, to me. Yeah. So, um, yeah, really, really cool stuff. Uh, when, so you mentioned referrals is a big piece for, for your business. Um, I always like to ask just a few questions around marketing, uh, especially in different service-based businesses, things like that. Hear what's working, hear what's not. Um, so referrals is a big channel for you. Um, anything else that you've tried that either has, has worked really well or kind of some areas you're like, yeah, this, you know, here's some lessons that we learned along the way in trying to figure out marketing for our business. Uh, but uh, any, any kind of top learnings or lessons from, from marketing and building your business? Uh, yeah, I can tell you a little bit about our experiences. Um, I don't know how... How, how great they are for, for learnings and lessons, because I'm definitely not a marketer and, uh, but we have tried a number of things. Um, and, and really our, our most important marketing tool is the, the, our results, you know, what we deliver as a service. And that's just not me like trying to market that, like that's just reality. And it's because we really, focus on delivering on our promise, right? Delivering on the value that we're promising to our prospective clients. Uh, we don't have any like long-term contracts or anything like everybody, you know, engages us. And then it's just like a month to month, 30 day notice kind of thing to give us a little bit of heads up. Um, so we're not locking anybody in. So really every single month, every single day, week, we're having to deliver value to our clients and, and prove that. And so that's where we focus so much of our uh, attention. So we started eight years ago and it was Eric for 75 bucks an hour, right? And that was everything. That was your bookkeeper, your controller, your CFO, but always the vision to build a team, right? And now we have a team of analysts, bookkeepers, controllers, and CFOs who we you know, match to our clients and deliver that service. And how have we grown from that to 110 clients is we don't lose a lot of clients, you know? Um, People stay like many of our clients have, have been pop path kind since 2015, 2016. I'm amazed when I when I get on their cloud storage uh, reporting that we have, and I'm looking at their 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 financial statements folder, and I'm like, well, that thing goes back to 2015. Like I just get this sense of gratification from that. Like that's amazing, you know. Like 
some of our, our oldest clients. And so we don't lose a lot of clients. We don't churn a lot of clients. It's not a marketing churn and burn kind of operation. It's like slow, deliberate. And, and so really all of that work has generated the referral engine, you know? So all of this good work has kept clients, you know, here and we continue to add value and adapt to their needs. And then when they know somebody that needs what we offer, we're the first person they think of, obviously. And so they refer us business. And the same applies to those uh, referral partners, like the channel partners. We were, we had, we had some share clients initially and we realized we work well together and then they start referring us clients. And so that's how that whole referral network has grown. Um, I need to be a better marketer and a, and a business development person and, 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 and work more closely with those referral partners, right. To keep us top of mind. It's like one of those things that I'm always trying to get better at, but that's, that's the number one thing that works for a business like ours. It's not high volume, you know, 50 new clients a month kind of thing. Um, so, so, so that's the reality, you know, we've done some other things like, uh, you know, content marketing, you know, it's all, you know, on our blog, a monthly newsletter, uh, two social posts a week across four different platforms. And so we have a, a marketing content partner who basically manages all that for us. And so, that's worked uh, over the years, you know, we've done different things. Um, it's worked to a greater or lesser extent. And really in my mind, it's more about just demonstrating that we're alive and present, that we have a pulse versus actually generating a lot of leads. That's my reality. Obviously like the social media marketers probably gonna tell me, well, call me, I'm gonna like generate a lot of leads <laughs> for you. But our reality is more about just having a pulse. Um, we do have one content piece that's all about the chart of accounts and the a template and a structure for it that I wrote. And it was a labor of love in 2016, shortly after I founded this business, because it really is what drives your financial reporting. It's the backbone. That thing is like a top 10 Google search result, or it's been on like page one, page two over the years. And that actually has generated a number of leads and to turn into business. Right. And then those turn into clients and then they become, you know, they refer us business. So that, that has actually worked. But in, in my case, as far as content pieces, it was really only that one content piece that was, like I said, a labor of love. It was like all of my knowledge and passion about the chart of accounts and related reporting dimensions and why it matters to business owners that generate a lot of leads. So I guess really the learning from that might be write more content pieces like that and less of the, the clickbait, you know, that you pay somebody else to write. Um, other than that, we do, we do LinkedIn engagement, you know, and we're B2B. So uh, reaching out to people on LinkedIn through uh, connection requesting, um, and, and, and following up and sharing content has been effective for us. We have a, a partner that helps us um, in, in that business. It's, it's called RevGrow. It's a, it's a peer business and they do a, they do a great job of that for us. Um, I should, I should uh, shout out to our marketing content provider as well, Full Stadium. They're fantastic. And so, so, so that's worked to a certain extent and, and RevGrow actually manages cold email for us as well. And so that's driven some, some leads and has been effective. We've really only been trying that for the last year or so, and it, it has uh, created some leads and new business. So that's the experience. Those are all the things that we've tried. Again, it's all where we are today as a business. It's really all about the referral and these other little avenues bring in a few more a few more leads that, that some turn into clients. I love it. I, I, I love just that that focus on really the, the relationship side of things. And I have to imagine that some of the the, the content pieces that you are doing are, are likely playing you know some role in um, you know creating some credibility for those that that are being referred and, and things like that. But um, yeah. you know building and developing the relationship with your with your current clientele with uh, potential referral partners. Um, it, it's it's amazing to see how impactful and powerful that can be, especially when you've got really strong retention. So that's that's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that's the goal. It's really just those referral partners that we treat so well, being our clients themselves, and then our referral partners who really were have shared clients a lot of times. Um, that that's the engine that drives the business. But like you said, all of that content out there. It, it builds that credibility. You know, it's, there's, there's a lot of people who do great things, but it's really like a, a one person show and they refer you, but then you go to their site or try to find out more about them and you can't, you know, and they might be great, but you don't have any way to validate that. Right. Like yeah. 
you know, you want that, that, that validation. And another thing we've always done is on, on Google reviews, you know, we, we need to do more of that, but we've got, I can't remember how many it is now, but a number of five, five-star Google reviews from real clients. And so again, it's that credibility, it's that validation. Hey, you referred plot path and Eric to me, I'm going to kick the tires a little bit before I waste my time with a phone call. And then they go out, they get that credibility from those content pieces and our Google reviews. And then they're, they're comfortable working with us at that point. Yeah. So how, do, uh, where, where do you see things going in the next three to five years? You know, as you look to, to continue to grow the business, um, what does the business look like as you grow it? And how does your role change within the business as it grows? Um, you know, we don't have any dramatic growth plans, you know, because we don't have any outside funding or not beholden to anybody to achieve certain growth metrics or any like anything like that. Um, so, you know, we'll, 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 we'll target, you know, 25 to 35% growth, you know, year over year here in the next few years and just continuing to scale the business under the existing model is is what we're trying to achieve um as we do that and you know we're at 100 plus clients now you know we'll, we'll grow to 150 200 and so everybody's role in the organization will change my my role will change and like we were talking about the different hats that we're wearing so that's what i'm focused on right now is building the leadership team handing off the accountability to them for certain areas and so 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 that's going to be my focus so everything doesn't come back to me i can rely on them to to make decisions and i can focus on certain aspects of the business while know that the other aspects like operations uh, hr our own finance and accounting is uh, is being taken care of very cool. I love that. Uh, well, I know we've covered a, a tremendous amount of ground. I want to be kind of respectful of the time that we have here today. Um, so I got a few rapid fire questions uh, just to kind of bring out some, we'll call them wisdom nuggets for the audience. Uh, okay. But as you, as you look, you know, your entire journey so far from getting into the finance world to you know, the careers that you had previous and in, in starting this business back in 2015, um, what would you say for you has been kind of your key to success? Any kind of traits, routines, um, things that just kind of are about you personally that you believe allowed you to become successful? Uh, I, I'm going to say that it's, um, it's, it's really uh, relationships with other people um, and really re respecting other people that I, that I work with. Um, the it's it's one of our core values is authentic kindness and it might sound cliche or kind of cheesy but we really like live it and breathe it every day um, and it helps us with client retention and team retention you know i'm so focused on our team and are they happy and the, because i know if they are then our clients are going to be happy because they're well taken care of so it might be kind of weird for an finance or accounting kind of person to say, but really it is all about, you know, every single day I'm interacting, engaging with our clients and our team. And I'm just doing my best to be authentically kind, transparent, respect them, respect that relationship. Cause I know in the medium and long term, that's going to pay huge dividends. Mm, I love that. How about advice? If you could give advice to uh, other business owners out there, um, especially those that have been in business for a little while, maybe kind of, you know, think of the, the types of clients that you tend to work with. If you could give those clients, you know, one piece of advice uh, from your experience, you know, building and growing a business yourself, what piece of advice would you want to give them? Uh, I, I guess from my experience, the, the one thing I, I would, that I see uh, trip business owners up um, more often than, than than anything else is really sometimes they're too focused on trying to build the business um, of 10 years from now or of 20 years from now. Um, and there's nothing wrong with having vision and foresight. You need that as you build your business, 100%. And you don't want to be entirely focused on solving today or tomorrow's problem, right? But in my mind, it's important that business owners get that that timeline right. And they need to be trying to build that business that's 12 months or, or 24 months down the road. And why do I say that? Because when I see them trying to build the business five years from now, which is exciting and hey, I'm gonna be whatever, $20 million, I'm gonna have 50 people, all that kind of stuff. 
they to go from where they are today to that they get hung up in what crm am i going to use you know and 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 what like payroll benefits provider and all these big big company questions that just slow them down and they're not you know uh, it, it's not a it's not a good use of their time and so they get all caught up in that and they spin their wheels on that and they waste a ton of time and they're not solving a whole bunch of other issues that they need to solve which is going to get them through the next 12 to 24 months so they can eventually become that business they want to be five to ten years from now hmm. i really like that that's a that's a really cool piece of advice um book recommendations so uh, any book recommendations something that you've you know been reading recently it does not have to be business if you don't want it to be um, okay. otherwise if you if you prefer you know podcast video you know anything else that you kind of consume content on you're, you're welcome to kind of interpret as you'd like here but uh anything that you would recommend for the audience uh so i'm gonna have to go with the power of now by eckhart toll and so if you if you haven't read that i highly recommend it, it is not the business book. Um, I read a bunch of business books, right? I went to business school and, and read a bunch of those. But more recently, I try to read a whole bunch of non-business things because my whole life is business. Um, and, the, and the power of now, like for a lot of people, for me, it was, it was transformative and it just uh, helps you see the world a little bit differently and uh, you know, try to make the most of, uh, of every moment. Beautiful. Um, we'll do one more rapid fire question here. And this one's just kind of fun. If you could choose one area in your business, and that's the key, you only get to choose one spot, um, one spot in the business where you take a little bit of magic dust and you could sprinkle it all over that one spot, wake up tomorrow, it's 10 times better than it is today. Where would you choose to put that magic dust? I, I'd put it on the sales and marketing, maybe because that's the area that I'm focused on right now and that I'm the weakest on, right? As the accountant that that build this business. And we do lots of really fun, interesting things there. And I and I love the way we do it. But there's so many pieces of the puzzle that I just want to make work perfectly and just, you know, make it spectacular. So if I had a little bit of magic dust just to make all that happen, that would be wonderful. It's a good place to put it. I love that. Uh, so for the audience, you know, if they want to learn a little bit more, if they want to connect with you, kind of follow the, the work that y'all are up to, um, want to learn more and potentially do some business with you, especially for those business owners out there that don't have super strong financial, you know, controls and everything in place yet. Um, where could we advise them to go for more information? Um, all the usual places. So plotpath.com, so P L O T P A T H.com. And you can connect with us there or of course on all the the usual social networks and you can find us there uh linkedin uh x uh facebook and instagram um you can book a consultation from our website uh you can email us from there um, and we'll be in touch and we when we do the you know free consultation thing it's me and we'll have a conversation there's nothing more i like more than just talking to business owners hearing about their problems and giving them real transparent feedback not a sales pitch, but about what they need to do to solve their finance and accounting problems. And if that involves plot path, great. We're here to help. If not, um, you know, they're not a good fit today. They'll go off, do their thing, and then and then come back when they are ready for our help. Beautiful. I will make sure to put all of that in the video description below. So for those that are watching, make sure once you wrap up the conversation here, go down, click the links, check out everything on the website. Um, you know, jump over to LinkedIn, say, you know, send a direct message over to Eric, say, hey, saw you on the business spotlight, a uh, great conversation. Um, and uh, it, seriously, if, if you're in business and, and you don't have, you know, strong kind of financial things in place yet, uh, and that's kind of a, a to-do item for you, highly encourage, go at least send some of those questions over to Eric and, and, and start that conversation. Um, I know in our business, it was very, very powerful. So if it's something that I can recommend here, I will highly recommend it just from, from personal experiences in, in, in the financial side of things. So um, with that, Eric, I always like to end on one final question, which is simply, what is most inspiring to you today? Uh, what, what inspires me most is that aspect of enlightening our business owner clients today. You know, I've got three little kids, you know, four, uh, eight and, um, 10 that are growing up in this chaotic world that's changing 
really fast. Um, and there's, there's a lot going on in the big picture in the media and globally, but I'm inspired every day by these hundred plus clients that we help run better businesses so that they can do, you know, lead better lives and do more for them and their families and, and more for the world. So every day I get to help out those business owners. Um, it's, it's such a gratifying and inspiring experience. Beautiful. I love it. Eric, thank you so much for being here. It's been a pleasure. I know that, um, had we had, you know, two hours of time, we could really sit here and dive into some financial stuff and have some fun. Um, but I appreciate you sharing a little bit about your, your experience, your journey through here and, you know, giving us a kind of a peek into what y'all do. And, um, it's, it's been a lot of fun. So thank you. Awesome, Tanner. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And I hope everybody gets the chance to jump on the website and dig into some of the, the details of what we do and how we do it. Cause I, I, I do love talking about that. So <laughs> amazing. 